Okay, welcome to the Cube Pod, episode three, season one. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante. Dave, kicking off the pod three, um, major, you know, earth-shattering force majeure, you know, meteorite right hitting Earth today, Silicon Valley Bank going under. FDIC taking a we reported yesterday the loan that they were going after, but the bank has been closed and taken over uh, by the FDIC. So major news. We're going to dig into this big time. Um, big, big implosion. Um, we've seen the recession hitting. We've seen the people getting smaller rounds in the capital markets. I think this last quarter was one of the lowest VC rounds uh, in quarterly going back many, many years. Um, the market's tight. You got crypto failing. Now you got a real bank failing. Not good. This is terrible. I'm surprised, John, that the market wasn't down more today. I mean, it was down. But to me, NASDAQ wasn't even down a, a percentage point. Of course, coming off a bad day yesterday. But I agree. This is this is really scary news. Yeah. And we're going to get into the on the later in the in the pod around the, show me the money section, earnings, public companies, private companies, where that's at. I know you have good insight into that. I have some some inside baseball from some CEOs on the private side. Um, but this Silicon Bank, let's let's get into the, the shutdown and the FDIC taking it over. This is huge. We covered the news yesterday. I did a news hit on it. Rob had it. We saw the run on the bank. That was really to me the killer. You know, we we called it on our on our podcast or on our news report yesterday, I should say, that it was a run on the bank. Um, I didn't want to put it in the headline because I didn't want to really promote it, but it was happening. Multiple CEOs were calling me up yesterday saying, we're getting our money out. And they had all their eggs in one basket. And the CEO at the time saying, okay, don't panic. It's going to be fine. I'm like, that's a red flag. Huge. Rob Hove, editor-in-chief, he reiterated that. He's like, anytime the CEO says it's a red flag, you know, this is bad. But this is a self-inflicted wound. This is the story, right? You know, killer bank, great pedigree, Silicon Valley Bank, the place to put your funding, if you got funded by a venture capitalist, you know, great diversity, great dollars. They had great rising deposits during the heydays. They survived the dot-com bubble. A venerable institution, Dave. They were an institution in the startup economy. They were the Silicon Valley Bank. This yeah. is huge. I mean, to me, John, this is like, well, first of all, I mean, self-inflicted, yes, but, you know, We've gone, this is an example of the seesaw economy continuing to surprise us. We've gone from tech boom. We had a semiconductor sh shortage. Now we got a, you know, glut. We, er, we had earnings beats, you know, during the pandemic, a hiring binge. Now we got layoffs, earnings misses, lower guidance. You know, like I said, a semiconductor glut. But the ball buster to me, John, is, you know, these guys were awash in cash during the tech boom. So what they do, they said, all right, we're going to stuff this into bonds and, treasuries and <laughs> who knew that was going to turn out to be a, a risky yeah. strategy. Dave, this is the 16th largest bank in the country. It went from doom and gloom. It's cratering. It went, went from cratering doom and gloom. Oh my God, this has never seen anything like this to a meme in 30 seconds. Got memes out there already. One meme is uh, from startup Jackson on Twitter. Open AI should take it over and call it cerebral Valley bank. <laughs> um, <yeah. laughs> so, hey, I mean, it's a you know, Silicon Valley Bank, you know, is an icon in your neck of the woods. It's very unique. Yeah, yeah. It's really disappointing and a concerning development that I think is going to elongate the the funding winter. I don't know. I mean, unless somebody jumps in and takes them up, but I can't see. Can you see Jamie Dimon? He could buy anything he wants, but I don't see them, you know, buy, buying into Silicon Valley or B of A is super risk averse. I, I, I mean, well, well I Jamie, Di well, Jamie, all banks had the same problem that Silicon Valley Bank had. It's interesting you brought up Jamie Dimon. Morgan Stanley managed it differently. Uh, First Republic and Silicon Valley Bank went the other way. And, and, and it's in the weeds for finance, but the story is this. They essentially had huge rising deposits. In 2019, they saw Silicon Valley Bank and, and other companies like Morgan Stanley had huge numbers. But everyone handled how they invested those deposits differently. Mo JP Morgan did it differently, and they were on the right side. They had plenty of cash reserves. And they managed it. And bottom line, it was either short-term or long-term bonds and 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 assets. So you know, available you know, for sale, yeah. long long-term hold to maturity. And they just were on the wrong side of it. They just made a bad call. And they you, didn't. You, but the other thing too, John, Silicon Valley banks, eighty percent of its liability was deposits. If you look at other, you know, the banks, some of the other banks you mentioned, more like sixty percent. So 
SVB is more exposed just because of their business model. But I, I, again, I mean, who would have thought that sticking them in, you know, three-year treasury, three-year maturity treasuries and other bonds would be would be risky. I mean, it's like, whoa, but that's again, the seesaw economy. And, really and, and, and prior to 2022, there's only been 10 quarters of deposit outflows in the United States in the past 50 years. Okay, 10 quarters in 50 years. We've seen four quarters in a row of outflows in banks. Huge banking crisis going on here. So the you know the cautionary tale that's coming out of this is this could be the beginning. Remember when Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers crashed in 2008? That was the housing crisis. This is another potential uh, signal for more carnage uh, in Silicon Valley in the tech community and or in business. So it's going to be interesting to see if this is just a one-off kind of a self you know, self-inflicted gunshot wound for the bank. But this is bad, and, and these guys had it going on. They had no, they had no debt. They had no problem. They in 2019, they had zero liability. They were growing. They, they've they, like they, doubled or quadrupled in the last, you know, several years. You know, you mentioned the red flag, the CEO comment, and then this morning you heard, you know, the email went out from the head of Y Combinator saying, "Take all your money out. You know, don't leave more than two hundred fifty thousand dollars in there." You know, the FDIC insurance, and so. You knew that was just going to create a run. Well, let me tell you what happened. This is the ironic situation. This is kind of the factual playbook. This is like the train wreck that actually happened. So if you the, the, the autopsy with this SB, um, SVB situation, deposits were going through the roof around 2019 and continuing like through 2020. One 2022, they were investing those deposits because everyone's getting funded, massive amounts of funding. We saw that bubble in either short-term AFS or long-term HTM AFS available for sale. HTM is hold till maturity. Basically, you can sell one. Another one, you have to hold till the end of the term. Rates went up and the unrealized losses snowballed from nothing in June 2021 to 16 billion by September 22. And what they didn't realize, the fatal flaw in all this is that they fucked up and didn't understand that the, the deposits were going to be running off because of the recession. So what they missed here, the big miss was they could have managed with some financial instruments, but the deposits were dropping off. So they were technically insolvent by September 2022. They thought they could resolve it. And what happened was is that when the run on the bank happened, combined with the outflows, it was just a death spiral. So they tried to raise 21 billion in securities to to raise cash. So we rep that was what we reported on. That was the same day that uh, Silver Lake uh, Capital Corp w uh, went uh, liquidated. Silver Silvergate, Silvergate, yeah, Silvergate, Silvergate, Silvergate uh, liquidation happened, but they couldn't get the round done, and that was just like in the past 48 hours, just like cratered. So you literally from yesterday whammy. to today, right? You had the double whammy, right? You said like you said the the deposits started to decline because of the the tech you know recession. Yeah. And, and then at the same time, you had higher interest rates. So people had, hey, we could maybe yeah. put our money elsewhere. You remember the savings and loan crisis back in the 80s. Yeah. You know, what would happen is those smaller banks that gave more attractive rates, you know, they <laughs> they had the liquidity crunch. And that created that 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 terrible domino effect. I don't know if it's the same here, but I, I remember that, you know, you're thinking these small banks, you know, what's the big deal? But then that ripple effect. Well, we're going to get, I want to get it to the, the on, on the, on the rant section. I want to get your thoughts on what the impact is from the interest rates. Is that the government problem? Um, but right now um, it's being reported by Dan Primack from Axios FDC FDIC is uh, saying that uh, Silicon Valley bank clients with deposits above 250 K will get an advanced dividend within the next week. So oh, this is a, this is because there are many startups, companies that are relying on the payrolls services. So yesterday, what happened was startups were calling me up, VCs were advising startups, get your money out. Because a lot of people knew about this. Um, the carnage on Twitter um, um, knew that uh, saw this coming. Pe people saw it from White Company, you mentioned. And so people were getting up. But as of yesterday, it was a run on the bank. And that was a, that was killer. Uh, so there's a startup impact day. People might not get paid for two payroll cycles. How long is it going to take? Yeah, to get the payrolls back in in line. That's that's scary. I mean, it's, at least at least the FDIC is stepping in. OK, that's good. Well, you know, um, how fast can they move? All right. Let me yeah. <laughs> it's like payroll. I got to get paid. I mean, companies is going to the fallout. The blowback is going to be massive. The fallout will be it will be interesting. This is a Chernobyl moment in Silicon Valley, Dave. I mean, this is like, we don't know yet what the hell's going to happen. And uh, right now that's good and looking good with the takeover, but um, it's just, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. Well, I, think, I do. And I think, you know, again, 
funding rounds are, 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 are drying up. I think this elongates that. You know, maybe, I don't know, maybe AI is going to be a catalyst, but it's really unclear who's going to fill the role that Silicon Valley Bank played as, you know, trying to trust the banker to, to your, your peeps. Yeah. I mean, I think this is, the, this to me is the big story is also the subtext to all this is Silicon Valley Bank and Silicon Valley venture capitalists. Pretty much the playbook is you put your money in, you get funded, you put it in SVB Bank. SVB, right? So, you know, when I raised venture capital 15 years ago, small, you know, a big round was considered like 5 million, which we did. We, you know, we were told, put it, we were told, put it in SVB, almost like it was like a contract, like, you know, inside baseball, of like, you know, watch the money. Um, but if you don't have money in three banks, I tell all startup founders, if you're listening to this podcast and you're a startup founder or anyone in business, you should have three big operating accounts, two, three big banks and an investment fund, not one bank, all the payroll, all that stuff being held in there. Do not have one bank. That's the tea killer. Yeah. I remember my first startup, John, um, you know, we were, we, we, had, we were doing really well. We had all this cash. And so, so we, we put the money into these treasuries, but yet, in order to get the money out, you had to have an auction. We did, ran it for years. Well, all of a sudden, you know, when the, when the economy tanked, the auctions, nobody was buying. So our money was locked in. You know, it's a bit like we learned the lesson. If, if it ain't liquid, don't do it. <laughs> well, we're going we're gonna to keep tracking the story. The SVB shutdown is going to be have impact. I think the next topic, Dave, I want to get your thoughts on is um, that I feel strongly about is what is the impact going to be on the Valley and the startup ecosystem? Because I we, we hinted at this, I think, in the first pod. This is bad right now i mean you know two months ago i was on the cube saying i don't think we're going to have too hard of a tech recession digital transformation is happening cloud guys are kind of historical element first time in the history of having hyperscale is in market with the agility of the cloud i was very kind of bullish and you know we saw the ai wave coming before chat gpt we had that covered um and we'll get to that in the next segment but i thought i, I thought we we're going to be fine but i got to tell you i'm now revising my position i think we are going to be in a two-year freeze, just like the dot-com bubble worse. We're seeing um, uh, really high-end people getting laid off from the big tech companies and the economy with the interest rates. Um, and with the banks failing, with crypto failing, the only goods, and even the cloud guys are, 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 are tightening their belts. Amazon, Google, Microsoft, all reporting earnings down from where they thought they would be. And internally, the scuttle button, all those big hyperscalers is tighten the belts, prepare for the worst, high impact value. This is huge. So I, I think if we're in a two year freeze, if that's possible, then it's gonna look a lot like 2001 to 2004. So good time to start a company if you have the cash, but if you're in market, you might be on the wrong side of history here, Dave. And this is gonna be yeah. a battle for, um, who's going to be competitive in this next wave of technology? Who can survive the I'm, capital I'm markets? I'm not ready to say it's worse than the dot-com bubble. I mean, that's when you moved out there. I mean, I remember driving up and down 101 during that time. And I mean, buildings were empty. Uh, Sun Microsystems was a big client of mine. I remember visiting them and there was just nobody around. But, you know, the difference now is, you know, the cloud allows these tech companies, they can more quickly right size their infrastructure yeah. where necessary. Whereas back then they were at all these sunk capital costs. And I think the quality of companies today is, 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 is much better, but you know, it's a different, different era. And, but a lot of these companies are still well capitalized. I mean, that said, I think this is very bad companies. You know, there will be companies that risk running out of money and start yeah. to get into liquidity well, crunches. I, and, I, I just, I, I think I disagree, Dave. I think I have to take the other side because I just, from out here in Silicon Valley, relative to the dot-com bubble was highly impacted here. I'm not sure what it's like in New York and Austin, some of the other tech hubs or even what's going on in Europe, but if it's similar to Silicon Valley, it's bad. And I think it's going to be worse than the bubble. I think it's going to be high impact, mainly because of the overhiring and all the companies that were out there trying to overhire and that bubble burst. Now, the only good sign in all this is the AI hype. So I, I totally see this depression coming and I'd be prepared for a two year freeze if I'm, I'm a company out there. And if I'm unemployed right now, I would be really, really nervous. Um, well, the, there's, there's very little in the data that suggests that you know, this is going to end anytime soon. I mean, having said that, 
it's not like enterprises aren't spending on on tech. They are. They're just you know really focusing their investments. <laughs> um, focusing you know, is a word for cutting. Yeah, it's true. They are cutting it, but they're not like the the thing of the dot com. Everybody, you remember Ed Zander during the dot com bubble? He stood up at an earnings call and said, "Anybody want to buy a server?" Because nobody was buying anything, and that's not the case today. People are buying yeah. software. They're buying buying. You know, the cloud continues to grow, at, albeit at lower rates. You know, you saw Dell's earnings. You saw HPE actually doing pretty well. I think I think companies have actually done a good job of rationalizing. You know, expenses. They used it as an opportunity to to pair the quote unquote, you know, de dead wood, uh, no offense, uh, but, but, you know, well, the, uh, is the, is the, the, is the, is the middle class, I call it the middle class of tech, the middle mid range companies, are they getting glutted out? Are they getting cut? I mean, that's the, I mean, the rich get richer in this, let's face it. They're going to survive. Dale will survive. Amazon will survive. Google will survive, but they're laying off millions of people. I mean, thousands of people. So, but the percentages aren't large because they have such huge employee base. So the question is, what what survives and what doesn't? I mean, the ones seeing... that I worry about, John, are the ones that don't have what I'll call inherent profitability. I'll take I'll give you an example of a company that has inherent profitability is Snowflake. You look at what they're doing, and 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 they can manage expenses. It's all about free cash flow for those for those companies, and so they have knobs to turn. It's the ones that don't have enough revenue and have, and and have you know, just too high of an operating expense that I worry about. And now I think there's a lot of security companies out there that uh, something's got to give. I mean, there's just far too many companies yeah. in that space. Uh, you know, having said that, there's companies doing pretty well. CrowdStrike, you know, we saw Palo Alto Networks, you know, earnings, you know, really, really solid. Okta, actually pretty good. Cisco, I just saw Chuck Robbins out at uh, MWC last week, had a, had a meeting with him and a couple of other analysts. Cisco's you know, doing pretty strong. So it really have a sort of mixed bag here. What that wasn't the case in dot com. Everybody was sucking wind. Well, do you think do you think that this current bank failure was a one off or do you think it's indicative to the uh, bubble bursting, you know, blowback that might look different than a dot com bubble? I mean, now there's definitely comparisons with the dot com bubble. I think it's worse. I'll say that again, but it's not situationally the same. There are cloud hyperscalers. You've got AI around the corner, but it feels like definitely a bubble bursting for sure, and at least case some carnage. I mean, the housing crisis in 2008 was a function of, of, of you know, the big short kind of thing. This is, is this a tech version of the big short? I don't know. Well, you know, it's interesting because you're right there. And I mean, you can't be any more in the heart of Silicon Valley than where you're sitting right now. Um, and so I, I look at it as, again, I said earlier, SVB was unique. There are there. I mean, who's their competitor? There aren't really any SVBs out there. You know, it's not JPMC. It's not Wells in the turnaround. It's not B of A. They don't do what SVB does. And yeah. so what happened is you know, from 2020, you know, to early last year, even mid last year, pre Ukraine, all this money flowed in from tech for tech. And like you said, what they do, the DBC said, put it in an SVB. They did. So I do think in some regards, it, it might be, I'm hopeful that it is a, a, a bit of a one-off, but it is, it is definitely a warning sign and no question about it. Well, the collapse of SVB is a significant, significant impact on the tech industry. And you know, I, um, Jessica Lesson summed it up great. She's the founder of the information by saying it's the most insane experience of her professional life. Out here in Silicon Valley, this is just an institution. It's like really like it is, it's like literally like you know, a big, a big, you know, attack on, on the, the valley. I mean, startups were, were risk taking entrepreneurs. Now they might have a chance that potentially that they could have their money disappear if the FDIC can't get them the cash and missing paychecks. So we'll see. But I mean, that's good news. I mean, that the, 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 that... What do you do if you if your SVB during the boom years of during the pandemic and all this money is flowing in, you're not going to turn it down. What are you going to do? You're going to say, all right, let's just stick this under the mattress, which is essentially <laughs> what they did. Well, if the un... problem is the mattress is locked for three years and you got to pay a VIG to get it out. If there's uninsured deposits, they're fucked, basically. <laughs> they're screwed. Well, the, well, the issue is they 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 couldn't wait till maturity and they ran into a liquidity crunch and now they got to take the loss. Well, I think I mean, like you, brutal. like you said, the companies that have cash flow are going to survive. And the ones that have like um, 
I won't say fake cash flow, professional services heavy businesses might be at risk. So I think to me, I'm looking at this kind of impact of who can survive the cash because cash is king right now. Um, to your point, Dave, I think that's a really good point. But is it real cash? <laughs> when you say turn knobs, knobs and acquire that just like a few handles that the business is scaling. Knobs means you can steer the ship away from an iceberg. A professional services business isn't a knob. That's a bunch of people on the streets. Yeah, no, a knob says, hey, I have I have things that I can dial down and make more profit. It, it, during the boom, growth was being rewarded. If you had growth, your stock price would go up. That's not the case today. I want to ask you a question. You, you told me one time that, you know, after your first startup failed, you said you, you learned in Silicon Valley who your friends were after that. And, and, and SVB went out to get funding. They were looking for a white knight. Everybody was like, sorry. Yeah. You know, you know why? So They're circling for the better deal. Like, hey, friend, sorry to see you go under, but, you know, we'll let you bleed out and then we'll take the scraps. <laughs> I guarantee you, you'll see someone come in uh, immediately. Probably come in and 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 get a better deal. The options of the of the financing didn't happen because why they're on a death spiral. I mean, once the run in the bank happened, Dave, it was over, right? I mean, this is and and this brings up a whole another conversation around the future of banking, right? So again, the concerning thing is you got crypto failing, you got real banks failing. Um, something has to come out of this on the banking side, the digital well, banking frictionless banking system maybe have some 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 blockchain but let me ask you a question maybe you know brings a brings some interesting thought here is did the maybe it was self-induced but where are the regulators here right i mean you know you look at at the the banks who went through the 2008 crisis and had to go through the stress test and they're solvent this is not that this is not affecting them where were the regulators when silicon valley bank was getting this huge injection of cash in terms of saying, hey, well, maybe you need some other investments that can protect you for liquidity in case those deposit levels start to decline. Yeah. You know, was this a failure of, of of the regulators? No, I think this is this is basically SVB screwed up. And then the companies that have done deals with to keep their money with SVB probably did longer term deals. And that's that's the pro that's that's the institutional structure of SVB and 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 their and their deal. But the impact of this is, I mean, real people are going to get hurt, Dave. I mean, this is like, you know, a lot of people are going to get hurt, lose money. So well, then what's the point of regulators then? I mean, I, I used to say no, but I mean, isn't it their job to make sure shit like this doesn't happen? <laughs> Uh, well, it happened really fast, as they say, yeah. you know, they said we're in an era of speed and velocity. And this run in the bank was a speed run. This is like a this was like a this happened literally overnight. People are like you know, we're talking about this last night, even even on Twitter. When I went to bed, I was like, you know, how fast will they be bought tomorrow? It went, went from our report yesterday, which was four o'clock Pacific on Silicon Angle. We it turned it was turning in real time. The meltdown was happening. Like I said, it was like Chernobyl. It was going on all night. All right. So, so what is the impact to Silicon Valley companies, um, both both public and 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 private and VCs? Give us your analysis. Well, first that. of all, it's a climate. It's a, it's a whole sentiment thing. It's trust. That you meant who your friends are. I mean, people when people are losing money, and a lot of people are going to lose money here. People lives will be impacted, either payroll or companies. Um, that's one problem. That's a long term impact of it. And um, the other one is confidence, right? There's, if there's no confidence in the system, banking and institutional, that's going to be there. Again, I think the broader conversation is that the startup economy right now is gearing up what I call the early stage uh, uh, movement is accelerating. This I still believe to be true because you look at the time in the dot-com bubble between 2002 and 2004, there were major companies that were founded during that time that were highly impactful. So it's well proven in these cycles that the time of, the innovation, the best companies come out are right now. So that's that's really kind of key. And so that gets a little bit of a blowback on that momentum because this is just, you know, structural carnage hitting the street. Bad pe bad money losing, institutions have no confidence, VCs might be gun shy. So I think there's going to be an impact on the startup ecosystem for sure, especially in Silicon Valley. I don't know what it's going to be like in, in, in the rest of the world. I will tell you though, if you're out there promoting decentralized banking, you want this right now. This is like, a, you're going to be using this as a, as a, as a bully pulpit to cheerlead on. So, but Silicon Valley, I think it's a, it's a black eye. It's going to put a stain on the Valley, um, unfortunately. And that they that they didn't get their shit together on this one, uh, in my opinion. And then the learning for companies: don't do business with one bank. 
I mean, we have four banks now, Dave. We four, yeah. yeah. So, and we're not even adventure back. But if you get ten million dollars in financing, you could put it in multiple banks, and you have that liquidity always option and 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 managed. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I think we had a little bit of dough in SVB. I think uh, I think I don't know. Did we close that account? I can't. remember. We have some money in there. Yeah, we do, right? <laughs> I, think, I, I don't that. think it's insured. I don't think we're going to make the two hundred and fifty. No, we're good. We're threshold. good. We're good. No, I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I, hold on i gotta text somebody we can we can we can uh, like i said i mean it's it's this this world is so weird now i mean we're old enough now that we've been around many cycles of innovation the memes are all over the place it's it's um it's been crisis to, to meme in 30 seconds yeah yeah well you know i i, I you know but i i don't think it's going to have a huge impact on public companies um i think you know their fortunes are going to be determined by you know their ability to 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 get ahead of this slowdown, uh, to understand the the new sales cycle, uh, to put the appropriate resources on there and control expenses, and very importantly, to forecast accurately. Right? I mean, I think you're seeing everybody dial down their earnings estimates. I'm gonna maybe yeah. talk about that, but but I think that's key, and, and that will keep that will keep people calm. You know, I think. That's well, let's let's jump really in, let's jump into the money side of where the money's being made. So first of all, we have a whole AI discussion because I think the bright spot on this whole cratering and the, the carnage is the fact mm -hmm. that you got an AI movement that's happening. That's real. Uh, we've documented that. Um, but in terms of earnings, Dave, you know the public companies have stuff out there, so you can see the numbers. The consumption-based SaaS companies, the big the winners, the snowflakes of the world, um, data dogs of the world. You know those companies. Their growth in 2022 to 2023 is down big time. And so they're getting hammered. MongoDB earnings were out. Oracle had a decent earnings, but still dropped after hours. Um, still speculation there on their forecast, but that's the publics. So you've been tracking all that. Private, yeah, I mean, not a lot of I people mean, have, to have access to this. We'll start with the publics. What's the public? Well, so security remains hot. I mean, it's, it's it, we've, we've talked about this. Security is not immune from the downturn, but it's, it's it, it had been consistently performing better than other sectors. It kind of reverted to the mean. But the CrowdStrike, it's net new ARR, you know, off the charts. You know, Mongo had a strong quarter, but weak, weak guidance. You know, Oracle, actually Oracle grew kind of double digit revenue. I mean, amazing, very strong IS and PAS, but people want to see that Cerner, you know, acquisition payoff. That was a giant, you know, acquisition. Couchbase, smaller company, had solid earnings, but, you know, the stock really didn't do much. So it's, it's not a disaster. I mean, you know, Dell, you know, everybody seems to be managing to expectations. What happens is they'll, They'll they'll make the EPS or beat slightly on EPS. They might miss a little bit on the revenue. Sometimes in the case of like CrowdStrike, they'll do a beat and raise, but that's rare. Cisco, although did a beat and raise, so it's really mixed right now, John. But I don't see disaster amongst the public companies. I, I don't see like huge cause for panic. Well, Snowflake had a sixty but, something percent growth. They're now down to twenty. Um. Uh. No. No, no. Is that right? No. Snowflake's grown faster than that. Um, but 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 I guess what I'm saying is I don't see a reason to go all in with your chips. Uh, but 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 at the same time, I don't see you know things vaporizing in tech. People are still spending. What about no, the Snow private companies like Databricks? Because Snowflake's a public company. Their data is out there. You got Databricks, a competitor. They're private. They're valued at billions of dollars. What was it 34 billion last time they did the round? I'm sure they did a down uh, recapitalization. Stripe, a private company, just raising six million dollars. That was announced that they have to do that to cover the employee tax consequences of their IPO. So yeah. six billion dollars to cover their employees' tax obligations. So. So Databricks was the topic on, on breaking analysis today, and it was more of a you know sort of futures looking technical architectures, how how uh, uh, foundation models like GPT are going to change the AI tool chain, you know how that's going to affect companies like 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 Databricks, but they raised a boatload of money. Uh, you know, they you remember Cloudera? They were late going public. Cloudera didn't go, didn't go public till 2018 because they were sitting on so much cash. And it wasn't really favorable for them to go public. The market was different back then. But I think I think Snowflake would have wanted to go public. I think the problem was that Microsoft was Snowflake was uh, Databricks' main go-to-market channel through Azure, 
And so it was kind of like Azure was there, it was, was Databricks was their spyglass. And now Microsoft is building its own modern AI tool chains. And so Databricks had to go redo its go to market and it's got to make some investments there. But I think it's got plenty of cash. But <laughs> it's it and others, I would include Snowflake as well, is, is facing some challenges as all these this new AI tooling comes in and sort of changes the way in which people use data and think about the velocity of data and the amount of data. I think to your earlier point, when these, these downturns, shit starts to change and happen. And I think we're going to see that again, coming out of this, you're going to see some new, new companies emerge with new thinking. And so, I mean, right now, let's face it, you, you know, it's a, it's a good time to start a company because you know, it's, it's an interesting time for investment if you can, you know, get it off the ground. But yeah. valuations are down. Well, the, start, I, down the, the, the startup cycles around um, the AI area is compelling. We had yeah. the startup showcase this week and that we had AnyScale on. We had Astronomer. We had OctoML, Neural Magic, uh, Arthur.ai, RoboFlow. And then we had Hugging Face CEO and um, some amazing people on that were doing um, talents. So you know, Hugging Face is known for the, um, you know, the, the machine learning kind of GitHub model, um, but just great talent. Great, great talent. Cohere, the founder of Cohere, they're doing a large scale stuff. So all, all, all next gen companies do, they look different than others. Well, John, foundational just, to models share, just to and, share some data from ETR. So Databricks doing really well. Cohere, you mentioned doing really well. Hugging Face in the in the data set doing really well. So these are companies with, with momentum. Organizations are, it's not the Ed Zander, do you want to buy something? There's money being spent. There's deals being done. Mobile World Congress last week, MWC. There's a lot of business being done. So there's transactions happening. That's why I'm, you know, I'm not ready to call it dot com bad yet. <laughs> well, I mean, this is the this is the bright light. So, for example, one of the things that I'm noticing is kind of like the, it, it's in every cycle. There's a there's a there's always a lesson, cautionary tale. You want to be on the right side of the street when when things happen. You don't want to be on the bad side. You want to be on the right side of history. Um, but Cohere, Stability AI, um, Aiden Gomez, Tom Mason, they're the founders of of these new companies. They're different. Okay. Uh, hugging phase, different, any scale, different company. They're all di structured differently with different people. And so what's happening is they, they look and they act differently. They're not using the same old infrastructure. Some are using Azure over AWS. I mean, open AI. Now you can stand up Azure instances. Amazon's got to be pissed. So that, you know, they're going to be all over that. So again, there's a new class of entrepreneur, which means that there's the old way. Now the old way is what was happening the past three to five years. So when you look at data infrastructure and security, two of the hottest areas that are platform oriented that are enabling this change, they're going to get radically shifted. So if you take the opportunity on the good side, knowing that there's a kind of a gloom and doom kind of a financial problem on with the banks failing and the VCs not investing with this kind of shift entrepreneurially, that means everything stalls. It's kind of like a it's like the eye of the storm, right? You, everything's quiet and then it just shifts quickly. That's what I think is happening. And, and to me, data infrastructure is going to get impacted. Uh, you mentioned Cloudera. They had big data in their hands and didn't get it right and ended up you know, becoming just another player in the market. They're still around, but they're not you know, game changing. It, it, you know, Databricks is, could be that Cloudera moment. Snowflake could go the other direction, but those guys are well positioned now. My point is, these entrepreneurs look different. Their companies are structured differently. They're building different technologies. Uh, and that to me is going to be very interesting to see how that affects the developer community and how the open source world would be impacted. So that to me is a big aha moment this year. And that's the bright side. You know, machine learning is now the new computer science. Uh, software engineering used to be the degree in computer science. Now it's basically machine learning. If you're not using machine learning and you're writing code, you're not really a developer. Every developer will be using machine learning in the near future, if not like immediately. So the, the game is changing on who writes software. And that will be the tell sign, Dave, of how fast this thaw is, you know, how fast this freeze bubble bursting carnage is, re yeah, is, is recovered. I, I, I mean, you know, the Fed is still a big wild card here. Uh, I'm no economist, but, you know, you saw the jobs numbers today. Uh, unemployment level was up a little bit, you know, it was just mixed. And so, 
you know, people are saying, oh, well, maybe a quarter point is OK. Uh, and so my 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 point being to me, inflation is the big concern uh, because it crushes the consumer uh, and and it's just makes things unpredictable. At the same time, you know, the Fed's trying to balance, uh, you know, unemployment and unemployment is very low right now. So that to me is the wild card. And but my point being this, John, people are spending money. And if and if inflation hits hard, they're going to spend less. It's always the case. Uh, and so, you know, that that is my big concern is, you know, coming into the summer, maybe even going into the second half. If we if we come into a, a, a recession because the Fed is stamping out inflation, that's going to affect, you know, tech spending. I feel like right now spending's OK. It's not terrible. It's not great, but it's definitely not terrible. And so companies, these SaaS companies, and even these infrastructure companies, they got big install bases and they're doing business. They're doing a good job with the go-to-market. Companies are buying. They are focused, which means they, yes, they're, they're cutting certain things. I think it's more they're delaying certain projects and they are still spending on security. They're spending on digital infrastructure. They're moving to a, you know zero trust architectures. They're, they're, any sort of data platform that allows them to better target customers is getting getting funded. And so there's still a lot of action in the field. You see it at these big shows. You, we certainly saw it, you know, last fall at, at reInvent. I remember sitting in the the MongoDB, you know, they had that little, those breakout rooms, John, you remember that? We had yeah. the, the green cards and I'm sitting there, you know, eavesdropping on all the customer conversations and they were consistent. Hey, yeah, we, we, we're going to push that out. We'd like to stake it in smaller chunks. Can we, can we split the contracts up a little bit? So it wasn't like they're, and it's still, it's not like they're not doing deals. And when you, I just talking to customers at, at MWC, same thing. We're breaking them into smaller chunks, but we're still spending maybe a few more approval hurdles that we got to go through, yeah. but we got budgets and, you know, we're not stopping. Well, I mean, the question is, is what, how does AI continue to grow? How do these applications get built and modernized? And what's the role of the cloud players, Dave? I want to, you know, this is a big question. You know, we've been covering AWS for 13, 13 years at reInvent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Google Cloud, been to their events. Microsoft Azure, watch them reposition the entire company under Satya Nutella. Okay, now they got ChatGPT. They got 100 million active users on Bing, a, a search engine that nobody uses except for MSN users, MSN.com users. So here you go. You got a complete shift. You got people who were Amazonian customers, hardcore AWS um, fans, Spinning up Azure service to get the chat GPT APIs, open API. So this is like, you know, Amazon's got to be there scratching their head. Again, this hyperscalers were never around in any recession in the past. And they are a power source of agility, velocity, new product introduction. Look how fast Microsoft turned Bing from a nobody to a, to a player. So yeah. anyone, so that proves the point on our first pod when we're saying, is, is there a competitive advantage to open AI? You know, uh, again, another debate. What does AWS do in response, Dave? Microsoft's looking really good right now. Poaching people from AWS. I um, asked them, um, I asked AWS at MWC. <laughs> I asked Wayne Duso, what do you think of Jet, Chat GPT? He just looked at me like, you asshole. And so, <laughs> Oh, but he did say, you remember when you met with yeah. uh, Adam Solipsky, he said, this is last fall. Hey, large language models are a thing. We're on them. Yeah. You know, we've, we're have we going to have a play there. Wayne said the same thing. Look, you know, we don't talk about futures, future products until they're ready. That's not our thing, but believe me. Well, you know, Adam nailed, he had mentioned large language models in my interview with him, Dave. You, saw, you picked that out of the transcript. Absolutely. He, Adam, Adam is a lot more on point with, with what's happening. And I think people give him credit for because he's new to under Jassy coming out after Jassy. Um, but I think Amazon, as we had called it, is going through some management changes where he's got to get his team in place and they got to be smarter about how they handle the ecosystem. Right. So the word ecosystem is super important for AWS. They have basically SaaS and now platform players coming out. And you know, the joke about um, chat GPT and, and your, and the comment from Amazonians, this is that, and we've been following this is that Amazon like Google has been very much in front of all the AI work. They've been leading. They've been leading heavily, a lot more than, than Microsoft. Microsoft essentially bought into open AI to get a leg up. So from on the chessboard, Microsoft looks like they're winning, I think. But, but if you look at the 
economies of scale that Amazon has in the trajectory of their AI business, SageMaker's got some really big advantages for around compliance. So it's not just slinging code with chat GPT and open AI. When you start getting into the, the real problems of AI today, Dave, it's not the, it's not the benefits of it. It's the, it's the problems that it causes bias, uh, compliance, legal issues, right? Yeah, you can't be just slinging AI code around thinking you're going to be like rolling over everybody. So I think that's the big aha moment that people are going to face very quickly in the AI world, which is, yeah, shit, well, I got to operationalize it. I, I just, I want to go back to something you said, and I want to make a comment about AI, that uh, larger conversation there. But you had mentioned early on that, that the consumption models, that that's where people are getting killed. And I wouldn't say they're necessarily getting killed. What I would say is that people are taking advantage of the cloud to optimize their spend. So, you know, yes, Snowflake was down a little bit, but still grown 50%, you know, last quarter. Um, so there's a little, little dial down there. They may down from 60% or whatever they were earlier. You saw the same thing with Mongo, with Atlas, uh, Couchbase with Capella, it's just, you know, you know there's, the, op the benefit of the cloud is you can dial down, you know, the benefit is to dial up as well. So, so I think my point being that I think this is, for now anyway, a trend where people are just being prudent. Now we'll see if they start pulling plugs, but they haven't yet. Yeah, is I it, mean, it, go ahead. Well, I mean, I think it's it's bite, belt tightening time, right? I mean, I think I think there's a I, I have no proof on this yet. I have no evidence other than a few data points. But connecting mm -hmm. the dots, I'm saying that the middle class of the companies, I call them the mid range kind of mid sweet spot mid range size corporations, private and public, so they're going to get squeezed because they got they're getting killed by ransomware. There's no defense on the security side. They got to make huge investments in IT. And they're in the middle of a digital transformation to cloud. And there's a lot of complexity involved. So that requires talent and that requires speed and agility and money. And, yeah. you know, the heyday of leaving all the lights on, so to speak, in the cloud and just going full throttle is, is over. It's really ROI time, impact, doing more with less. I hate to use that term, but, you know, any down market, if you can't show immediate impact, then you're out. And that's what the cloud does. Not everyone's, not everyone's getting there. I mean, not to get all nerdy, but there's more virtualization in the enterprise the, by orders of magnitude over containers and Kubernetes. So even though that's growing significantly, um, that still costs money to migrate old IT over to virtual containers. This is like what's under the hood. The engines are off the, and the tech engines are changing. That's my point about AI. A whole well, nother wave is going to wash away those sandcastles, I call them, you know, in the beach. That's old IT. Look, AI, you know, they're saying the trend is your friend and why not? This is the one segment that could be a real catalyst for tech momentum. It's got amazing disruption potential. I have to tell you, Jim, I've been looking forward to this day for since I started the industry 30 years ago when, when it, AI was, you know, in the 80s, people would talk about it. It was fascinating. And then you had that, you know, yeah. decades of AI winter. Well, now you've got you know, all this data, this processing power, these foundation models like GPT and others. And that is yeah. really exciting and is game changing in my well, view. I got to say, I, I've been an AI guy since, since college, um, you know, and when AI was kind of in, in, in the beginnings of its, of its movement, you know, we love media, we love video. If you're in the video business and AI, you've had moments where the scale side of things weren't kicking in, but now video and AI have scale behind cloud and data. So I think a lot's going on in those areas that have been, people have been itching at this, at these areas. And it's good to see yeah. them both explode. Video is more important than ever before. Um, and, and AI is going to be creating more value and doing all the heavy lifting. And uh, you and I both bullish on that. So I think you, you, you saw Keith Townsend's tweet. <laughs> exactly. The treasure trove of metadata from all of our Cuba yeah. transcripts. Yep. We know it, Keith. Yep, we're working hard <laughs> we're, on it. We're going on a cube. But well, what I want to do is build an avatar for us so that we can do interviews as avatars and then just go back to the linguistics of the index and have the index basically do the interviews for us. Uh, that's definitely, I mean, that could be done. You know, basically <laughs> that's what we'll see after the rant section. <laughs> basically done today, right? We'll save that. Uh, how about crypto? You know, yeah, Bitcoin falls 8% to 19,900, nearly two year, two month low. Ether falls 8% to 1400 Silvergate capital has gone and Silicon Bank, Valley Bank implodes. Buying opportunity, Dave? I think so. I mean, crypto is not dead. 
by any means. I mean, I, I, I by no means do I think that crypto is all of a sudden, you know, Bitcoin is going to go back to 100,000. I think it will someday, but I think it could be, you know, 18 months, two years, you know, before we start to see another run up. But I, I think it's going to happen. I, I think the, the fundamental for crypto, like you were saying earlier, when banks fail, there you go. That's what got crypto started. And so, and I still think the innovation is there. Yeah, there's a lot of scams. They get shaken out. You know, the Silvergate stuff, to me, that was more just piss poor, you know, management of the bank, not doing things, not running best practice. That was just, that was just poor. But I, I still like the crypto thesis. I think there's a lot of innovation, distributed finance, no, no DeFi, no doubt is, is I think still a thing, even though it's being crushed. I, I'm, I'm still a long-term bull on crypto, John. I think that the bank failures points to digital currency. Um, I think the regulation is going to be a cluster. You know what? Um, I think this is going to be an opportunity to look at how this fallout happens. And I think it just highlights the fact that the world's changed so fast. And, and I think, you know, the, my rant would be, you know, on this is, is twofold. The government, I'm wondering what how much involvement um, our government has in this and the other regulators and the financial institutions. Is, is this another, is there something under the covers here that has a 2008 big short kind of stem, systemic problem? I mean, I don't know, Dave. This is like, it makes me feel like I'm not really happy about this. Well, I, I mean, you know, crypto should be regulated. I mean, I would welcome that if the if the governments come in and say, okay, here's some guidelines for crypto, protect the small investor. I mean, a lot of people got hurt, you know, during the tech tech boom and you know, you know, they the meme stocks. I mean, you know, the regulations should be designed to protect people who can't protect themselves. You know, having said that, you know, people <laughs> say, oh, we should ban crypto. I mean, that's just absurd. Well, let me ask you a question. Speaking of crypto and AI, since we got on the pod here. Is Web3 crypto or AI, in your opinion? Because the Web3 I, I, yeah. word's been kicked around a lot as describing what crypto is. And crypto became NFTs, um, shit coins, not truly blockchain-enabled companies. We, Web3. we talked about this two episodes ago. I think I think it's the confluence of those two two trends. I think Web3, you know, metaverse and, and crypto slash blockchain cryptography – I think those worlds will come together. I think there's going to be a lot of innovation there. I think you know you know as well as I do that blockchain, in terms of privacy and 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 ledger, and there's just so many you know awesome potential uh, workloads and applications. But the tech itself needs to oh. get better, and I think that's where a lot of the innovation has to come from. You posited two shows ago that everybody's leaving crypto, going to AI. I, I do think those. Yes, those, that's happening. Those vectors will, I know, and I, but I do think those vectors will will reconverge. I do. Well, we'll see. I mean, we'll see. I think they are going there. That's that's the that's the the, tr the herd of the alpha alpha entrepreneurs and techies and money too is going there. But I think crypto also has the self inflicted fraud wounds that they they you know they drank from the trough too much. Look at the failures. The Wall Street Journal had an article on March third. I'm reading it right now on Tether. You know the Tether falsified documents and shell companies makes FTX look like, you know, a small potatoes, basically tether holdings. Um, it's around stable coins. So tether runs, um, it's a $71 billion stable coin. It's supposed to not go under this. If this goes under, then it's going to be mayhem. It's gonna be crazy. So yeah, I mean, crypto's know, fraud I, side is, is killing its own growth. I, I know. I mean, I got a lot of greedy friends in, in crypto, you know, from my track friends and, I, you know, <laughs> you you remember when these these exchanges were saying, "Hey, put your money here. We'll give you fifteen. This is this is during zero interest rate. We'll give you fifteen percent return." And they'd call me up. You got to put all your all your crypto into you know this platform or that platform. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, NFW. This thing is going to blow up. And so that's just and people got hurt, you know. And you, Wolf of Wall Street, and, Dave. And, you know, and you saw that, yeah. Wolf of Wall Street. Watch the movie. Younger kids out there weren't around. The you know the bulletin board ga shell games were all over the place. Um, you know fraud is everywhere. All right, well, Dave, rant section. Um, what's your big rant this week? Um, I got I got two rants. I mean, the, I, I, you know, I don't want higher taxes, but but you know the debt has me concerned. Everybody's down on Biden's tax plan. It's never going to see the light of day. But what I did like about it is he at least talked about. Hey, you know, attacking the debt. You know, Clinton did this. He was the last president. He raised our taxes, but he said, I'm going to pay down the debt. So I'm okay with that. 
The other rant I have is I saw a stat the other day that that women in CEOs in the S and P uh, 500 now eight percent double from four percent. Yeah, progress. Ago. Well, how good? Look it's how like, good everything is. I mean, eight percent. I mean, that is just yeah, it's not good enough. I mean, there. I mean, you, you know, John, you just did the the two unbelievable events and the the, the women in tech angle was phenomenal the international yeah. women's day there's so many talented women yeah. in our industry that are absolutely qualified to be you know chairmen's and ceos and and eight yeah. percent is just pathetic yeah, my my, yeah. my rant on first of all yeah i agree with the rant on the women stats that's the equality and equity is bad the my big rant is international women's day why is it a women's why is one day it should be every day these days i rant on these whole i'm with morgan freeman there shouldn't be every day is a day right so uh, you know to celebrate and step back should be a focus on the numbers and and question on where we're at so i think you know having an international women's day is good for that but making it and be like that's it we're done no it's going to be back to work so we're going to i'm going to pledge to do more interviews and keep focusing on that um because there are some amazing women out there and 50 percent of the population is 51 percent women and software is used by everybody so it's so unbalanced and the tech business has to change it's got to be equally represented and you know we had, we need we need to get our company 50 50 as well on the, on the video side so uh, that's my rant on that and, and and let me just say it's not it's not an education gap there's more women getting educated ed women are better educated than men and so you know they should be CEOs. Right? I think, smart, I, think the, the, I think I think I think the smartest people in charge. The, the comments I heard in a lot of my interviews was the pandemic was actually good for men to understand what it's like to work at home. And that came out a lot. My other rant that I was going to be my, my number one rant is going to be on SVB to come back in a second. But my other rant was going to be on the, the Biden White House nothing burger of a report. The, the Biden White House released the U.S. National Cybersecurity Report. It was comprehensive. It didn't say anything. It just said, "Here's the state of social of, of um, cybersecurity." The the government is letting companies outside the United States attack our land and people, and, and they're not changing the red line, and they're letting it go, and they're telling private companies to defend themselves. So we're responsible for defending ourselves and the companies, and that's unacceptable. The government should have a better doctrine on this and change the policy. And I don't know, these these documents are just kind of the, more of the same. You know, we're going to private public private partnerships, just just not getting done. So the government needs yeah. to be much more proactive, whether it's incentives, ransomware hurts people. And there are people dying because of this. So it's not like there's no deaths. You know, people get unemployed. They have they, they have family hardships. So, you know, in war, that's how they do that Article 5, which is if someone gets killed on American soil, then they will respond. Well, Ransomware doesn't kill people technically out of the gate, unless it's a fetal uh, monitor or something, which is ha actually has happened. But cybersecurity is a threat and it's brutal. That's a good rant, John. And you know, you're right. The finger wagging from the government at at companies to do a better job, and you know, the the public private partnership is 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 crap. I mean, look at the 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 Federal Trade Commission, Lena Khan. I go on my rant again. The, you know, going after big tech, going after tech, shutting down the arm NVIDIA deal. It, you know, that's just, it's just not good. And, and so again, I'm not saying big powerful corporations shouldn't be regulated if they're breaking the law, they, they should, but the finger wagging and the, and the high and mighty posture, it, it's just not productive in my view. Well, my number one rant for this podcast is the SVB Silicon Valley Bank debacle. This is disastrous. It's never should have happened. Management should have caught it. They should have been on it. In fact, the chief risk officer who was reported as seeing it, saw clouds on the horizon, and then resigned and cashed out her stock and left. So they saw this coming. It never should have happened. It's going to cause harm. People are going to lose money, self-inflicted, just absolute mismanagement and horrible situational analysis on the entire bank. Uh, and again, 16th largest bank in the country, just despicable. And but and banks the are regulated. Will be I, I, tremendously I'm going to pile on, pile on say banks are regulated. Uh, it, the, the regulators have to take some piece of the blame pie on this. It can't be a hundred percent on the bank. It's maybe 
Uh, give me something, John. Give me 15% on the regulators. SVB Bank never should have failed, period, full stop. It's a bruise on Silicon Valley. This is a problem. A lot of people are losing money and will be hurt. It's a, it's huge. It's too bad. It's really unfortunate. Well, Dave, that's we're at the time here. We're pushing the hour here. Um, just, you know, we got a lot going on, the Cube, right? The world's changing for us, too. More digital. We're doing a lot more shows. I got to say, the studio in Palo Alto, your studio in Boston, kicking ass. I love love the content. We did International Women's Days. I did 20 executive leaders. We had women in data science at Stanford, um, getting hardcore um, tech power there. We had the startup showcase with AWS's ecosystem around all the ML AI stuff. All the big leaders are AWS ecosystem partners. So that's a good sign for Amazon Web Services. Uh, RSA is coming up, security. We're going to see a lot more security and AI content for us. And of course, watching all the big tech trends, um, all these big moves being made, you know, happening in the industry. And again, yeah. today is, 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 is the bank failures, crypto failures, a lot of shit happening. So we're going to be a media row at RSA, you know, uh, so I'm stoked about that. Mobile World Congress, MWC last week, we had a big presence there. It was awesome. Four days, like I said, we're doing business. That whole dis we didn't do our pod last week because I was in Barcelona, but the whole disaggregation of the telco stack was was front and center. You saw a lot of tech companies, Dell, HPE, Red Hat, Snowflake, you know, AWS, <laughs> Google, uh, Microsoft, all of the traditional tech companies are aiming at that trillion dollar plus telco market. Uh, some really interesting dialogue where you know, big you know, finger pointing between the telcos and the over-the-top providers and public yeah. policy. So that's going to be a really interesting space to watch. Dave, great to see you in the studio. I'm in the uh, my, my office. See the Bruins jersey in the back there? Best team in the NHL right now. Let's see if they can make a run for the Stanley Cup. Yeah, they blew it last night. They were up two zip to the Oilers. They ended up losing 3-2. So, well, anyway. Hey, oh, they got their ninth ball. loss of the season? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Red, by, by the way, John, Red Sox are 10-0. and 0. Keep your socks on. I don't know if you can see my Red Sox socks. Uh, I, well, <laughs> we'll see how good that comes out in the real <laughs> <Right. of> season. <laughs> but Dave, great pod. Uh, hey, have a great weekend, and uh, let's let's pick it up next week. A lot a lot more cranking. We'll see the blowback. I guarantee you, we'll be talking about SVB and the impact of that for a long, long time. The crypto uh, rising from the ashes, hopefully soon. Uh, again, what a weird market, uh, but still, it's still opportunity out there. All right, thanks, John. Thanks, everybody.